Hey, Bluestone artists. Man, I've missed having you guys in class. Um, so when we got out for this COVID thing, I went home and realized that my old sketchbook doesn't really open and close well anymore. So I went ahead and bought a new one. Um, this is the cover of my new one. I've been working on it. Um, I tell you guys all the time that it's important to make your art personal and meaningful. And that's what I've tried to do with the cover of my sketchbook. Um, each animal represents a member of my family, which they chose, um, except for the lion, which represents Jesus. Um, he's referred to in the Bible as the uh, lion of the tribe of Judah. So he's on top because I wanted to remind myself that he should be the most important person in my life. And I'll keep you guys posted on the progress of my sketchbook. Uh, but in the meantime, we're going to talk about the assignment I have for you. So you'll see that I have sitting here a pencil and a paintbrush. We're going to use those uh, simply in our project. I've got an empty bowl, which you can use to dilute your paint. Um, I've also got a paper towel, which is good to dab off your paintbrush if you've got too much paint and water in it. And this is coffee. I tried to make the strongest coffee I could. So um, you can use anything from coffee to a Kool-Aid packet mixed very strongly with just a little bit of water, or you can use one color of watercolor paint if you've got it. And I've got a cup of water there. Um, let's see. And also, of course, you need your sketchbook. Um, if you don't happen to have not have your sketchbook, then you can also use just a piece of paper. Or if you have watercolor paper, you can use that. Um, but the way I'm going to start here is by showing you just a simple sketch. Um, you can see that I'm drawn very lightly. Uh, we're not going to go overboard with that. I always tell you guys, draw lightly, so be careful. Um, I attached a picture of this particular coffee cup, um, so you guys can work from the same picture I'm working of. It's just a white coffee cup. It's, but you can see the shadows and highlights on it really well, so that'll help you. Um, one of the things you'll notice as I pencil things in here is that I make mistakes, um, but I don't erase those mistakes right away. I s fix my lines first, and then after I get things the way I want them, I'll go back and erase those pencil lines. Because remember that your mistakes, once you erase them, you can't see where you messed up. But if you leave them there, you can see your mistake and use that as a guideline to make the correct lines. So I'm just going to continue to pencil this in, um, get some marks for where I want some shading, and we'll move on to coloring here in just a second. So after penciling things in, I began laying in on the coffee. Um, it's very light. It's a lot lighter than I thought it would be. So I'm going to have to put some layers on top of it. Um, watercolor paint works the same way. If it's a little too light when you start, you can go back after it dries and just add another layer and it darkens it up. Um, so the principle is the same. Um, the more water that you mix in the color, the lighter it's going to get, whether that's watercolor or Kool-Aid or coffee. Um, so for dark areas, you want to use rich color. And as areas get lighter, use more water. Um, and it's something you have to get a feel for. You're probably going to mess up. It's okay. Um, you'll have to just get a feel for it. Um, the paper towel, use your paper towel to dab off excess water or paint if you want it to be lighter, uh, if it's too dark. Um, my advice is to always test your values on a scratch piece of paper as you're painting. Um, just touch your brush, brush on a scrap piece of paper and see uh, what, how deep and rich it is or how light it is. Um, I didn't have to do that much here because the coffee was so light that it really wasn't an issue. Uh, but if you're using watercolor or even Kool-Aid, you're probably going to have to do this. Um, ironically, I'm, I'm recording the audio afterwards, so I already know how this turned out. And I can tell you that once I finished, I wasn't particularly thrilled with the results. Um, the drawing's fine, uh, but the coffee didn't really end up being as dark as I thought it would be. Um, but just like I tell you guys, your sketchbook is a place to learn and explore, and it's not always going to be uh, a place for your final, most finished, amazing work. Um, yes, do your best, but embrace your failures and realize what you're le you've learned. Um, so I tell you what I've learned as I did this. Um, I like the color of the coffee. I really like that. It's called sepia. 
Um, it's kind of a picture thing, but coffee, it gives you that sepia tone. So I like that. Um, but I just couldn't get the coffee dark enough. Um, if you watch the other video that I'm sending with this post uh, by another artist, she had the same problems, but she worked a lot harder, I think, to get a little bit darker coffee. And you, you really should watch hers. It's amazing to watch the process of how she does it. So um, in the end, is this turned out okay. Um, you can see that it gave a weird texture in some places where it's the most dark. That's just my paper um, picking up darker places for whatever reason. It's probably just the paper. Um, but I'm choosing to embrace the madness. Um, so I hope you guys will be successful with this in your attempt. And please take a picture, uh, send it to me. If it turns out well, uh, I just might post it on Instagram. Um, if you don't want me to do that, just tell me. Um, I don't want, to sh want you to share this, and uh, I'll respect your wishes. So um, in the meantime, as Bob Ross would say, happy painting.